Hey, this is Tox. And Jamie. From the band Heavy. And you're listening to Doom Tomb Podcast. And I, I like to sometimes watch midgets riding donkeys jumping through flaming hoops. Sometimes I have a real problem with getting off, so I have to look at really weird shit. everyone and welcome to the doom tomb podcast my name is chris i am your host and today on the podcast we have all of the band members from the band mortalis mortalis is like a has this like stoner vibe with a little bit of punk psychedelic mixed in with it they're based out of austin texas And we get into a few things, talking about music, what they have currently, and what they have coming up. If you need to, hey, pause this for a minute, go on social media, and follow them on Facebook, you follow them on Instagram, follow them on Bandcamp, so you know when they have new material coming out, and if they're going to be playing at a space near you. I know they do a lot of stuff over in Texas, but I know they're expanding their realm, so look out for them. They are definitely a band to watch. We get into a lot of things on this podcast, and one of them is cannibalism and you might want to say why cannibalism well if you haven't uh, listened to the previous podcast you might want to do that and you'll have a clearer idea also we have uh, an, a track coming up later there was this uh, band that i reached out to and they were kind enough to reach out back to me and they are called owl crusher and owl crusher is kind of across the pond they are in Northern Ireland. They're a three-piece band. Uh, they formed quite a bit ago, and they have a debut album out, so I'm going to put a link in the show notes, and I'm going to put a track on later so we could check that out. And finally, if you have not checked out Forever Doom Streetwear, go and check them out. They're a cool bunch of people, and uh, they have a first run of some merch right now, and they're creating their second run now. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great ideas as far as um, illustrations and et cetera. So if you have not gone there yet, check out Forever Doomed Streetwear on Facebook. All right. I think we got all that taken care of and cleared out of the way. Now it's time to get into the interview. This is Mortalis. Here's another on location at South by Southwest at Texas Miss with band members from Mortalis. Gentlemen, how the hell are you? What's up, man? How are you? Awesome. Now, could you please go around the horn and introduce yourselves? Uh, Sure, yeah. I'm Lucas Intercobs. I'm the singer, rhythm guitarist. I'm uh, Luis. I play the bass. I'm Michael. I play lead guitar and rhythm guitar and backup vocals. I'm Brett, and I play drums. Brett, man, I, I just saw your set. And I got to say, it's damn incredible. And, man, you're pounding those skins, brother. But the one thing, I wanna, and I want to go around the horn because I want to talk, of course, I want to talk a little bit about equipment. You're the, um, you're the first person uh, that I've seen lately in this, like, Stoner Doom kind of scene yeah. that plays a Gretsch. Yeah, I've, I've kind of noticed that, too. And we're kind of, uh, we've gotten a couple comments about using Black Star amps also right. in this kind of, the type of music we're doing. It's kind of funny because I... I got all my equipment stolen like five years ago, right? That's not the funny part. Ugh. But I got all my equipment stolen, <laughs> and, um, you know, I, it basically whatever insurance covered it, and I got to replace all of it with better shit, basically. <laughs> and um, I, I wanted, originally, I was thinking about doing like a garage rock type of, like, kind of surf rock band. Right, right. So I went to a music shop, local shop, and I just let him know what I was doing. And he suggested aggression. He suggested Blackstar, and I was like, "Cool." And then I met up with these dudes, and we just come, we went a totally different direction, and it just ended up tonally working out pretty well. You know, while we're on that subject, because it's it's topic of conversation on pretty much every podcast, can you go around the horn and just tell me a little bit about the equipment you're using and why you chose it? I know yours yeah. is the Gretsch. Yeah, I, mean, I got the Gretsch. I think it's like a, a GF420 or something like that, or 540. Right. Um, really nice, like, semi-hollow body guitar. Uh, like, I call it a Cadillac because it's black and gold. Mm. And, uh, and then I got, like, a Black Star. Uh, I don't even know. It's like a 112 single, like, tube amp. 
I'm not big on jargons. 40 watt. <laughs> 40 watt uh, but it's a really nice piece of equipment. It's like an anniversary edition of their amp and uh, just got lucky and got the last one. Sure. That was in stock. Um, but yeah, let me pass it off to Luis here. Yeah, sure. Uh, I play out of an uh, uh, Ampeg SVT Classic. Um, I'm not really sure why, but it was just something that I always tried aiming for. Did it give you the, it gives you the tone you want? Oh man, not only that, but it's just it's just fucking powerful. Right. I just never put it above like three on the volume now because like anything else, I know will just completely knock your socks off. You blow you'll blow out the entire area. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, I love it because of its tone. Um, I play through a, a Fender jazz bass. Right. Uh, but I've modified the shit out of it at this point. I've replaced the bridge. I've uh, I tuned it down to a uh, pretty low tuning. I just right. like the uh, the aggressiveness that it gives out. Absolutely. On the low notes. Absolutely. Yeah. And what about yourself, sir? So I play through my still. Well, it was my first guitar. It's a Fender Stratocaster, um, but it's um, I use a Fender Tex Mex pickups in it. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I've always enjoyed the versatility, and it just seems, when we first started, like, well, actually, before we started this band, uh, to kind of deviate from this uh, just slightly, um, before we started this band, uh, when I first met Lucas, he was playing through his stuff, and right. I brought my stuff, and we just, kind of how we got a lot, like, when we first started to become friends, we noticed that our guitars, they just seemed to, like, really complement each other sonically. Absolutely, they do. So, um, that was kind of, like, what sealed the deal for us, and, uh, and we just ran with it, um, but I run that, uh, Stratocaster through, a, a Black Star, it's a, um, head, a 40-watt head, uh, into a, uh, actually a, a cr an old crate, uh, two by twelve cab. It's. Uh, I hear that a lot. Sometimes people are using stuff, man, like from the seventies, uh, and and taking it on tour. I mean, I would want to kind of baby that animal if I could, because you never know when that thing's gonna break down. You know. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it, it's actually I'm surprised because I mean you know I mean no no not to you know belittle like you know a company or anything, but yeah, you, know, you know, crate's not exactly known for you know their. Yeah. Longevity, I guess, but I've had that cab for quite a while, and it's uh, it's held up pretty well, and, and the speakers are still stock, and I think they still sound, you know, fantastic. So, Absolutely. and I run through uh, a number of uh, a number of pedals as well. Right. Um, What's your favorite? Oh my lord, uh, a lot. Um, I mean, I love <laughs> fuzz, of course. I have a, a swollen pickle from a Dunlop that I use for uh, mostly for uh, lead guitar tone. Um, right. I use a lot of electro harmonics. Huge fan of their stuff. Cool. Um, but uh, I try to keep it simple. You know, it's basically a fuzz, a reverb. Uh, I like to use two delays because mm -hmm. I mean, you can never have enough delay. <laughs> sometimes when you want to get like super trippy and uh, yeah, you go know. a little psych. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Which is, I guess, part of our background. And uh, yeah. Um, you know, maybe that's a good. Maybe I'll, I'll segue into that. Uh, you know, when we can go around again and just, or maybe talk to one of you and just tell me what what you would consider yourselves. What would you classify yourselves as? I don't want to give you a, a label, so maybe if you have one, I'd love to hear it. Sure. But first, I'd love to hear about the drum kit. Oh. Uh, I play a Pearl set. I'm not exactly keen on the exact kind. I've never focused on uh, brands or you know certain kinds of gear, but right. Uh, Pearl drums with a variety of Sabian cymbals. Yeah. Uh, mostly B8, and I think I have a Zildjian on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but. I, it's my second drum set. Okay. I've been playing for about nine or ten years now. Really? Uh, I, and I hate to say this because I'm staring right at you. Nine, ten years, and I, I know yeah. you. I hope you don't yeah. take offense, but like, did you start when you were ten? What? <laughs> I, I get it all. I look like I'm 15 years old. Right. Uh, but I'm actually 22. Really? Uh, one year past drinking. Outstanding. Uh, Are we gonna have some beverages today or what? I, we, we had one at the uh, high, <laughs> high Sign Brewery a while ago. What'd you grab? I uh, got a Seamus Irish Red. 
I, uh, well, it's perfect because <laughs> hey, tomorrow, man, we got to throw down. We got to have some corned beef and cabbage. Grab a few Ooh. beers. Tomorrow's the day, Ben. I would love any kind of food right now. <laughs> I haven't well, eaten since like nine o'clock. As we have been told, there is a taco truck that will be out later. If you you weren't you guys weren't here yesterday, right? No. Uh, that taco truck, man. Get it before it sells out. They sold out yesterday, and they have some killer stuff. I gotta actually once they're out there, I gotta promote them uh, when they come back because that stuff was so good. You eat it so damn fast, you can't wait to have some more. Heard. So. They had what? Eight tacos yesterday, and I was just like, I'm going to try and beat that today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Set a new record. I, tell you, I don't know how their stomachs are today, but, um, <laughs> well, man, that stuff was so good yesterday. So what would you, um, maybe I'll go to you and I'll pass around if anybody wants to add. What would you classify your music as? Mortales is gnar. Just gnar. Gnar, gnar, dude. I actually saw you guys, you said that on uh, um, Bandcamp, and I wanted to go <laughs> over that. Uh, a few of your releases now. Uh, you have a release coming up soon, yes? Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, it's uh, called uh, Look Alive. Uh, it's coming out, hopefully, we're, we're aiming for April, maybe May, if uh, things get a little delayed. But, yeah, man, we finally wrapped up everything. We've been working on it for about, I would say, a year. Um, you know, lost a drummer halfway through, got uh, Brett joining the band like for about six months now, and uh, just got, yeah, man, finally wrapped it up, and we're really, really excited, so looking forward to it. So for the last three months, we've been trying to build up some anticipation, get some, you know, get some new, honestly, get some new content out there, man, because we've, we had a demo that came out maybe a year and a half ago, and we haven't we hadn't really shit since then. And we were just like, man, we're we can't keep writing on the same five songs for a year and a half. And we've been sitting on this stuff for a while. And and uh, so yeah, we were really excited to release it. We released like three extended tracks uh, in the last three months, and and I think it's gonna be like nine tracks total uh, on the album. So um, getting really excited, man. Now, can you um, can you tell me a little bit about either any of the tracks? Maybe like since I don't have the since we don't have the material in front of us. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about it? Like, what was uh, what was one of the easiest tracks that uh, like took really no time at all to create? Oh, wow, that is a really good question. Uh, what would you think, Michael? Uh, I feel like Psychic Violence came together really, really quickly. I mean, that yeah. was kind of like a two taker. I yeah, feel like. yeah. We we kind of got in this groove lately where we're starting to write two songs in one. So we we are having fun playing with going from really fast to really slow and uh, going back and forth in songs in different styles. So like a lot of these extended tracks, quote unquote, are going to end up being one or two tracks on the record and they're just going to seamlessly kind of flow into each other. Psyche Violence definitely is, which is going to be the opener on the record, we think, um, which is the one that we opened the show with today. Yeah, that's what we're leaning towards. We're, yeah, that one is, uh, it came together really, really easily. It was a, a really kind of... Uh, straightforward concept that we had for the song. But it's different than a lot of the stuff that we were doing previously to it, too. Yeah, it almost has, like, an ACDC vibe right. to it, uh, mixed with, like, in my opinion, like, Bad Religion type of, like, uh, chorus, like, more of a punky type chorus. And then halfway through, it just switches gears and goes into this prog, psychedelic stoner jam, uh, and it gets really bluesy. It's and, just uh, grungy and dark. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's very, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's that one. That, that was definitely like when we when we wrote that, we were just like, okay, this is um, this is definitely where we're headed, right? So that's that got us really excited. And like you said, it's gnar. It's not gnarly, it's not. <clears throat> but gnar. Oh, totally gnar. <laughs> so, what track on this upcoming release took the longest time to create? Ooh, that's also really good. We actually <laughs> we had to cut a song from the album that was like a twelve minute fucking masterpiece like, an opus. like it was our opus for sure and it took us a really long time to get it down we we switched uh timings like time signatures like three four times time in the signatures song. we changed keys we changed halfway keys. through it i mean <laughs> you name you name any kind of like deviation from the norm you can think of yeah we did it and musical masturbation in other words we yeah just, we could we didn't know when to stop um so it took us a long time to record it we were never really happy with the recording and then we kind of came back around to it maybe like six months later, and we were just like, you know what? This is a big chunk of the record, but like, I feel like you know, we all kind of felt that it was, it, it didn't work anymore. Yeah. So uh, surprisingly, after that, we ended up writing another 10-minute song, which is what we closed tonight, the, the, the show with today. Oh, with the uh, Round of the Devils. Round of the Devils, which yeah. is uh, another one that kind of came together really easily. It's a riff that I've been sitting on for a year. 
and then we, we just got the right people together in the same room and it came together. So do you think that uh, you'll ever maybe put that other track out as maybe a single or something? Or I think we'll probably end up uh, ultimately just cannibalizing it, and maybe you'll find certain parts of it in other songs in the future somewhere. Uh, there was some really, really cool stuff, but altogether it was a little bit too bloated, a little too self-important, I feel like. I don't know. Yeah, no, that, that sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead. I I personally have only heard the instrumental version of that song like once in the studio. Right. Uh, so I haven't heard the main core of it, uh, but that just you know gives us a fresh ear to start on it again if we ever decide to extract some of the riffs from sure. it. Sure. Like you know, uh, you talk like these are other bands maybe outside of the genre, but you talk about like the Beatles. They had I forgot what. what um, I'm, I'm blanking on the song. But there's a song. It was actually three different songs, and they took the three different parts of it and put it in together into one song. Same with uh, Billy Joel. Billy Joel did it with uh, scenes from an Italian restaurant years ago where it's like he had this piece, he had this piece, and it, it wasn't all complete. Just jammed it all together and created this, you know, this fantastic song. Uh, just on a kind of a side note, but related, um, I'm, I've been listening to a, a lot of Cypress Hill lately and like a lot of 90s hip hop. And so I've been watching like a lot of videos about like the behind the stories of some of these songs. And I don't know if you know the song, How I Could Just Kill a Man by Cypress Hill, right? Huge hit. And Something I just don't understand. <laughs> and, and one of the, like one of the songs that got me into hip hop, right? And I was probably like eight years old. And uh, so I learned the other day, similar story. It was three different songs. Two, two different beats that they end up slapping together and three different like choruses and verses that they end up slapping together. Right. And all of a sudden, it hit, it's a hit. Uh, now, are you, are you a big follower of, uh, of all hip-hop or just you, you sticking with the 90s? I'm a huge hip-hop fan. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of a, of a, a hip-hop artist called Ill Bill? I have not, actually. Okay. If you, it, you know DJ Muggs? DJ, yeah, DJ okay. Muggs. So if you, if you get a chance, Ill Bill and DJ Muggs did a release called Kill Devil Hills. Uh, right. It's got to be one of my favorite hip hop albums of all time, and uh, you got to check it out because Definitely you know you hear some of this this current rap and it's what do they call it mumble mumble rap right now yeah, where I can't it's almost like that. they're using the vocal as a kind of instrument, but you know even in listening to some of the interviews with people, they're they're saying like I don't even know the lyrics, like I'm just mumbling it and right. It's um, like as long as it's catchy, people will like it. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, somebody like uh, like this uh, Kill Devil Hills album, like the first song right off the bat, they're talking about conspiracy theories and all kinds of other weirdness, and you're just like, this is so unbelievably refreshing over just hearing, I don't need to hear about Sip and Syrup every, every song. Right. I don't need yeah. to hear about the rest of the junk. And uh, after a while, it gets kind of tiresome. I'm like, what else do you have? What else can you go to? Absolutely. I mean, I kind of, you know, feel the same way a little bit about the genre that we might potentially be trying to put ourselves in, which is like stoner rock, doom rock, and everything, where it's just like, it is hard to find bands that really stand out in those genres. Right. And, um, and I think that's, that's something that, like, I really enjoy the music that, that we play, because I feel like from our varied backgrounds, like, I come from, I used to play in a reggae band, I used to be in a band that, like, I played banjo in it, and I used to be in, like, a folk band and everything, and then coming from, like, going from listening to a ton of reggae and ska and, and, and then punk music in high school and then going into metal and all of a sudden like meeting these guys and they're the ones that introduced me to Maiden and all these you know all these Winhan and all these new bands that I'm listening to now right. and uh, and I think like they have a completely very different background he like Brett has a completely very background and it's just like I really enjoy like the sound that we're able to get from all of that because yeah. it's uh, it just comes together nicely and it's, sometimes it's, it takes a little bit to you gotta really, you know, fucking finagle it in there yeah. sometimes, but uh, it'll work. <laughs> yeah, we're we're definitely kind of uh, not exact. I mean, sure, we borrow a lot from like Stoner Rock and Doom, but I mean, we we all come from like different backgrounds, you know. And it's 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 kind of we're it, it's never been our goal to really like fit within like, a certain like type of genre. I feel like we're just kind of doing what we know. The only way we know how to do, you know, which is, you know, and we're just, I'll be, have a, such a wide variety of influences because Lucas, like, I never was really like a punk guy, but Lucas really kind of pushed me into that direction and it's been, you know, pretty cool. Same with Brett. Uh, he's uh, kind of turned me on to a lot of like more of that direction. Um, and me and 
Luis over here, like our bass player, he's, uh, we, you know, we grew up together and we come from, a, you know, more of like a metal, um, kind of weird, weird, like outsider, like kind of like background, I guess. And um, that's what's, uh, that's what's helped in our, as far as like keeping it varied is our writing process, I feel. Uh, usually someone will come in with one idea for a song and like, uh, I, what song was it that we were working on? For a while there, we kind of we were kind of like stuck on it, and then uh, just so happened that one of us went on you know vacation for an extended weekend or something, and yeah, that was round up the it was round up the devils. Yeah, yeah that was sick. yeah. And so the go to practice and then yeah. ended up writing all the parts that we were missing. Yeah, so round up the devils. That was the one. That, it's a pretty you know about ten minute long song, but yeah, yeah that I, was the, we were that, stuck uh, on it for the longest time, and then yeah, it just sort of you know Lucas went away for a while and then he was just like oh go work on the song and then we did (laughs) yeah i feel like the just the the inherent process itself forces us to make it varied just enough to where like makes it interesting at the the end you know now you were saying that uh you had or you you were saying uh, you had some different influences what are what are some of your influences that you bring to the table uh i'm more of an kind of alt alternative rock Guy, I was I was raised very white. Uh, a lot of the mainstream stuff, you know, and a lot of the Blink 182, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Eventually, that evolved into more progressive. I love the Mars Volta. I love Rush, uh, but also keeping it the Hives, uh, Minor Threat, punk, and these guys are actually really my first experience into the kind of psychedelic, stoner kind of stuff. Uh, the most I've ever gotten into that was you know some fly golden eagle stuff maybe uh but it's it's been a very cool experience and i've learned uh a lot about being in that that kind of band it's 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 a very different feel it's it's very fresh every time we uh do something new well, it's, I, every, as I'm going around and looking at you guys, you all have smiles on your face. Like you seem like you're really enjoying the scene and um, enjoying what you're doing on stage. If I can, I just I have to go to a cheesy question for just a minute. Um, how'd you get the band name? I I would like to know that too. <laughs> all right, who's got the who's got the story? Because I can tell a version of it. You can go, probably going to be angry. <laughs> you can go ahead, or do you do you have, do you have the story, or is the other story? I, I can start it out. Right. Okay, I mean, we used to be called De los Muertos. What was it? De los Muertos. Okay. Like Dia de los Muertos. Yes. Yeah. Uh, of the dead. Yep. And uh, it just so happened that you know we were Google searching just to make sure before we finalized with everything as far as the name of the band and all that. And nobody had and it. And nobody had it. Right. And it turns out that uh, a band in San Antonio that hasn't been together in, what, like eight years or something yeah, like that? they played a show since 2010, I think. They reunited that weekend, apparently. <laughs> no, jeez. Uh, you know, we just we felt like we had to play it safe, like we had to get something else instead. So you came up with Mortalis. Yeah. Well, actually, we didn't, we didn't come up with that. Um, we were having a lot of trouble coming up like, with names that haven't been taken, man, because everything's taken. That's why we were so psyched about De Los Muertos. Um, so whenever we were trying to think of names, we were thinking of like famous monsters, and that's taken, and we thought of like some other uh, cro- chromonaut and all these other stuff, and we, nothing really felt right yeah and uh and we all all of us except brett obviously uh we're all we all come from hispanic uh backgrounds so like luis you know was born in south america my parents are dominican michael has like a mexican background right uh i mean we're we're texan you know yeah uh, but you know we're we've been, we've been here a long time oh yeah Tex-Mex. yeah a little tex-mex over there he's a little queso um <laughs> but uh <laughs> He's a little cheesy. He's a little cheese balls. That's uh, what makes it so good. But we wanted to stick with the, the Latin thing. We wanted to, to kind of represent, you know, our, our cultural uh, background. And so I started reaching out to my family. And I was just like, hey, mom, hey, dad, like, try and come up with some cool names. And my parents were just texting me constantly all day, every day. And then my mom came up with uh, Ritmo Mortalis Band. And I was like, well, we're not a merengue band, so we're not going <laughs> to be called that. But I told these guys as a joke. And we were just like, well, Mortalis. And we're just like, hmm. And we kind of sat on it for a little bit, and we we're just like, it is kind of in the same vein of the dead, mortal, mortalis. It's all, yeah, we're all going to mortality, die, like, but also being like dangerous. Yeah. Like, you know. Mortalis, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, it was, that's, we settled on that. Right. And, uh, and it's definitely like, it's, it's taken the place of Delos Muertos now, finally. It took a long time for Delos Muertos to wear off. Right. 
And as the uh, resident white man in the band, <laughs> what do Hello, you think? Oh, that's uh, that's me, <laughs> Brett Hanrahan. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, that name? You enjoying it? Uh, I thought it was very cool, Mortales. It's, you know, it's pretty easy to Just get say. the translation. Yep. So I wasn't too confused, uh, but it was very cool. I was very excited to be more of a you know, kind of Mexican-influenced group, even if it doesn't come across the music, uh, you know, as much as it would if you had a Spanish name. Sure, sure. <laughs> but I think that the, oh, thank you. I think, I think our background also and our kind of how much pride we take in, like, our, our heritage and our culture and everything, I think definitely is involved in a lot of the lyrics that we write. I think, like, we definitely come from a, a unique perspective um, in that sense is, you know, coming from parents of immigrants and little Michael's been ingrained here for a while, but, um, you know, Luis is, is first generation, I'm second generation, I think, uh, and, you know, the, the, the struggles and, the, and, and what makes life interesting and being that type of, coming with that type of background, I think definitely um, is reflected in a lot of the things that we write. So, uh, in getting with that, with the lyrics, uh, what are the majority of the songs, what are the, what's the lyrical subject matter? Who's a, ma who's a major lyric writer? I guess that would, that would be me. Okay. Um, definitely, it's, it's definitely a group effort a lot of the times. Um, there's, everyone has input, but yeah, I would say I, I come to the table with tr try and have a, a whole song together, and then right. you know, and I go like, do you guys like this or not? And then we, <laughs> we kind of play with it. But um, you know, there's, been, there's been a lot happening, man, in the last couple of years, and in, in not just in our country, but all over the world. And I think, again, coming from my background of being in a punk band in high school and, and really during the George Bush eras where you know, everyone our age was just like very political and yeah. very involved. And, and still now. Feeling like I haven't been since then okay. and realizing that it's, it's almost mandatory to be that way now mm -hmm. um, and, and all the pressures that come with that. And I think uh, we're, that's, that's where a lot, of my, a lot of my material comes from, just like the confusion of everything that's happening right now, trying to make sense of it all and, and really trying to make um, what I see a lot of our songs is like a call to action. Okay. Really calling, trying to call things out and trying to call people to, to do something about it. And that's a perfect segue into some of the material that you already have on Bandcamp before the next release. If I could go over that and we could talk a little bit about the tracks. Yeah, that'd be great. So we have uh, Psychic Violence, Nothing Good Happens After Midnight. Now, before you, before you tell me, it's like my mom used to tell me that, but she, she was a little later. She said, nothing good happens after 2 a.m. So, uh, okay. okay, can you tell me a little bit about that track and what that means? And sure. I know you're going to say something. Does anybody else have anything to add to it? Um, yeah, um, so I guess uh, my, my, I guess the way I personally interpret the lyrics uh, myself is kind of like, um, I mean, I, I, I think we were like, you know, we had the song, the basic like framework for it and everything, and um, just the idea of like, I guess maybe the, uh, the, cult, the media culture that we have now, particularly here in the United States is, you know, a lot of like, it's gotten to the point to where you it's so hard to like kind of divine like what exactly is truth what is not like what is just an outright falsehood and it's just the blurring of the lines it's like it, kind of like a sci-fi kind of like deal of like you know just like that kind of like bleeding into our like universe and reality and kind of just like you know these uh falsehoods and lies and just this toxic culture like yeah. literally just kind of Destroying the fabric of space and time, I guess. Yeah. It feels you know, like psychic violence. It feels like every day there's just something that is fairly important that has happened, uh, and ultimately, I think you know, just it, at least to a certain type of like numbness to it all, which I feel that's what the music's trying to convey as far as that song. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, and I just had to add, like, when it comes to the lyrics, you know, definitely Michael uh, was was kind of the the ringleader and like the idea, the concept of the song. And and when it came to the lyrics, I really wanted to use when I when he said psychic violence, my first thought went to MK Ultra uh, experiments. Sure, sure. Um, so I, I did, you know, I, I did a fair amount of research on it and just try to learn a little bit about what exactly happened and what people went through. And um, so I try to use some of that imagery a little bit of just someone trying to basically losing their minds. Right. Um, or have their mind and, controlled. Yeah. And yeah. just having, realizing that you don't, you're not controlling anything around you and uh, all you can do is just watch. 
So, are you a big conspiracy dude? I'm a huge conspiracy guy. Yeah. Okay, so uh, <laughs> give me a few that you're uh, currently studying or interested oh, in. Man, there's okay. Speaking of Blink 182, Brett yeah. Tom DeLonge uh -oh. apparently is losing his fucking mind. Yeah, have you seen the, I've been the stuff whole, on social that yeah. he's doing? I've been watching a whole bunch of that, right? Yeah. The alien guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's the guy who, so he quit Blink-182. Apparently, he's met with some, like, really high-up government officials about alien... Ghostbusters? Uh, was that actor, the one with the... Oh, Dan Aykroyd? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that guy. Just, he's, he's, he's into the UFOs, too. He just balls fucking crazy now, but... <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm really, like, into the Tom DeLonge, like, to the, to the stars, I think, is the academy that he's... Yes. Ahead of now, and they just released footage. Yep. They just released footage like a week ago about like some alien UFO flying around, and it's like a, you know classified footage. So I'm really into what's whatever's going on with him right now. And if you were to think like a power pop punk punk band would all of a sudden go into conspiracy theories, you'd be like, no, I, I just don't see it. But now, what do you what do you think about that? I think that's just natural evolution. Right. I feel like that's where they were destined to go. Right? They already talked about their, you know, their town and their parents in school. So now it's like conspiracy aliens. Do They're you, out there. Do you remember the song on Enema of the State that you said, like, hey, mom, there's something in the back room. Hope it's not their creatures from above. Blah, blah. He's like, he's, he was writing about aliens even back then. Yeah. He, he knew it all along. There are aliens out there. It's only a matter of time till we find them or they find us. So right? maybe all the small things are actually little yeah, small truth, aliens truth running around. Things. Could that be? Could that be it? <laughs> <laughs> so let's go. Let's go to your other track, uh, Overflows, Vampires. What can you tell me about that? That was a fun one. Uh, really quick, I can give a little bit. Um, so my idea for the song was talking about. Um, it's kind of a, a personal thing for me. Is uh, at night when you're trying to go to bed and all of a sudden you're just flooded by your thoughts and anxieties and everything and it's like uh, basically becoming an insomniac because you're, you're just obsessing over things and you can't relax. So Overflows to me was the idea of, that's one of those two-parter songs. It's like one song and then the last two minutes is a whole different song. And the first half of the song is basically talking about how, you know, the, the anxiety, the creature is just waiting for nighttime to come out. And then uh, it's just kind of waiting. It says, like, an open door. Like, he, he's sweating from the th side of an open door because it's like, ooh, I can get out, you know? And uh, then the second half of the song, Vampires, is talking about when they finally do come out at night and they just fucking suck all your energy. And uh, that's, that's what that song is about. So are you, I mean, just putting those two words together, um, is there a little bit about that that you're talking about, like, energy vampires, meaning in the sense of, like somebody that just zaps your energy, like a, just not not a an extraterrestrial or anything, but just like an average everyday human, where you could tell there's some people that have such great energy, and other people all they do is just try to draw from you. I mean, that's definitely an interpretation, and I, that's what I my lyrics are kind of that way. I think the way that we write is open to interpretation, so I, I love like hearing other people's ideas of what it could be. I mean, that's definitely you could definitely take that from that song, and and it would apply just as uh, strongly as what I originally intended it for. Now, we, we discussed a little bit about uh, some of your influences as a drummer. Um, could anybody else tell, say of any other influences, uh, major influences growing up, or things that, uh, that really got you? Like, you, you, you obviously all have a different heritage and different background. Did you listen to, and I, I apologize if I'm speaking out of turn, like... Um, just music of your culture? Oh hell yeah! Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean, I, of course, you know. Like, I mean, for me, like when I started playing guitar, I mean, one of my like first guitar heroes was, uh, you know, Carlos Santana. Like, you know, was oh, absolutely a big influence. But I mean, for I'm just speaking personally, like him, um, you know, David Gilmour, Pink Floyd, right? Um, now nowadays, I get a lot of influence from like. Uh, uh, and you can hear this, you know, I, I kind of on like overflows during the the solo. It's a kind of a noise solo, but I uh, I was greatly inspired by um, Sonny Chirac, the jazz guitarist, yes. um, uh, who I greatly admire. You know, I hear that a lot, whether it's in this genre or other genres, even some hardcore genres. There's like, uh, and not I mean not completely hardcore, but like a band like Helmet. Yeah, uh, oh, Paige great. Hamilton, jazz influence, uh, jazz taught, and there's several others. This comes up on the podcast a lot, where a lot of people in this genre get influenced by jazz. Uh, do you have a reason? Is there a reason why? Do you think? 
I mean, for me, jazz, it's, I think part of it is, I mean, jazz has always been kind of about freedom, uh, right. particularly, you know, it's, it's, you know, oftentimes construed as wankery, which is totally like justifiable <laughs> in a lot of cases. But yeah. then you have like those that kind of um, synchronization of these different uh, musicians coming together and uh, just it's just pure expression and I think that's what a lot of people at least for me like what I enjoy about the music that we do is it allows all of us to express ourselves and be ourselves and it's just it's very freeing it's a it's there's nothing like it at all absolutely now um with with talking about music you know getting on stage and etc um and I'll start with yourself uh, do any of you have any warm-up techniques or maybe like a warm-up noodle? Like there's a, there's a band back where, where I am in Arizona, um, and almost every set that this one band goes, uh, starts, he always noodles to uh, Give Me Three Steps from, uh, from Skinner. He's like, yeah. no, it's just my warm-up. That's just what I like. Is there anything that you have? N- me personally, not really. I just kind of just go for it, really. Uh, right. What about you, you Lewis? Um, just to kind of like loosen up the fingers because I do play with my hands. Yeah. Um, I just tap it on my knee or my thigh. Mm-hmm. So just kind of like build it up, go faster, faster, slow it down a little bit. Just because uh, usually with like the harder songs that we have, right? Um, I find that sometimes it'd be it's much better if I warm up to that speed, that level. Sure. The song, especially in the very beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, are you? Do you warm up to anything specific? Do you have any specific beats? Uh, I, I like to try out Goliath by the Mars Volta, and then give up, uh, <laughs> because that song is just above me. Right. But it, it it works for humility and a warm up. Now you mentioned uh, earlier uh, Rush. Anything? Any kind of uh, warm up by uh, Mr. I want to say it correct, Peart. Mr. Peart. I, I believe Peart is the correct way, but I'll always say Pert, <laughs> just because it's easier on me. Uh, I, I do jam YYZ sometimes, right. maybe the solo to Tom Sawyer, maybe pretty much anything off Permanent Waves and Moving Pictures in uh, 2112. The greatest song ever made, 2112. The Overture, right before uh, Temple of Syrinx. Yeah. I actually, I do love Temple of Syrinx because he does some... Fills in between parts Those that are, like are very interesting. Oh, that 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 song you mentioned, Temple of Series. I fucking love that song. That was the that was the song that. <laughs> All the temples love Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I should actually give the mic. Hey, he's the singer. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we got some podcaster and the drummers. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was my introduction to Rush was that song, and I then just go back and you know Fly by Night and Caress the Steel, and then so go good. back up and. Yeah. So um, when playing live, what is the easiest song to play live, and then what is the most difficult? Easiest song for sure is nowadays, man, for us. It's like a two and a half minute, balls to the wall, very garage rocky, like punk band or punk song. Uh, hardest? Hardest? I don't know. I mean, Round of the Devils is pretty fucking hard. It's pretty hard, but we did a really good job today. We did. I think. I was proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I would say my hardest song is, is Round of the Devils, even though that's one of the one like one of the riffs that I wrote. It's still hard for me to fucking play. Do you ever do you ever um, write something specifically? Like I've, I heard interviews with Jack White, and he says sometimes I try to do the most difficult and where my hands are spread apart the farthest, and I have to reach the furthest so I can feel it more. Is that something that you've ever done, or are you just like no? I just rather be in the pocket or. I definitely have done that myself, but um, not on recording, uh, at, at least not yet. Uh, but yeah, definitely. I mean, I've how I've, you gotten grow. S- I've gotten so much better playing with these guys, and I did write a riff before we even got together that I physically couldn't write. I wasn't I wasn't good enough to play it yet, but I wrote it in my head. And then getting together with these guys, and I t- I hummed it to them, and they were just like, "All right, well, it's just like there's been a few things where I'm like, no, I physically can't play that." And they're like, "Let's just practice it. We'll get it." I'm like, "No, I'm not. I physically can't do it." And then we eventually get it, and that was one that I was like. I'm, that's one I'm really proud of, the house you built. Uh, we played that today because I literally couldn't, two years ago, I couldn't play that riff. Right. Now, um, 
Guys, I, I want to thank you so much for uh, sticking around with me. And for everybody that's listening out there, I should have told you to pause this earlier and, so you could actually follow everybody on social media. Um, I have a few questions, and then I want to ask, I want to tell, let everybody know how to reach you all. Um, now, before you go, I have a question that the previous band asked you all. Now, after that, while, we're, when, while I'm saying that, I want you to come up with a question that ask the next band. Don't know who it's going to be? Have no idea. Now, the question was, you're in a plane crash, and you know, I think you know where this is going. Wah, wah. Somebody has to get eaten first. Now, who's getting eaten first? You want to go around and chat? Uh, no. It's, uh, is it's, that an easy? It's pretty certain. It's, it's Lucas. It's probably me. It's definitely <laughs> Lucas. I'm looking good right now. I'm just, I'm just marbled. <laughs> you can tell. So are you more like a Wagyu steak or like uh, a sirloin? I'm more, yeah, I would say more of like a, a ribeye. Just like, just, just, gl just gluttonous fat. Just full ribeye. Yeah, just, <laughs> you're going to have to really trip me. Yeah, a little bit. Now, what do you, okay, so since, it, since we've all decided that it's going to be him, uh, what do you think? Um, like a solid marinade, like a moho? Marinade? Oh, I mean, because. Oh, man. Or do we do, do we just do a little. <laughs> oh, there it is. Look, hey, man, when you got a tool like that, you got to be able to shed over it, you know? Size out. Size out. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you do more like just a basic salt, pepper, kind of, uh, you know, and, and maybe a little butter, a little rosemary at the end? Like, how, what would you do? I think to honor um, to honor Lucas, we definitely need some kind of like moho, something super garlicky, uh, right. may, uh, maybe even like something tomato based. I mean, I would think you add like a, awesome. like a little bit of citrus with that with the moho and. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, with a side of yucca, if possible. Oh, nice! That is a good good call, my friend. Oh my lord, I'm so hungry now. <laughs> and maybe is there a chance? Close enough. Is there a chance that uh, we could add like turn something into like a little bit of chicharron? Teach her oh yeah, like right in a, a little bit of the side, a little bit of the back. Absolutely. All right. You got teach our own lobes. <laughs> so now that we have that said, what is the question? Or if you have more qu than one question, I'm I'm down. What question would you want to ask the next band? What is the maximum amount of strings you would ever want your guitar to have? Okay. All right. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, oh, me too. You agree, you agree with that? Yes. <laughs> you agree with that question? I, absolutely. Okay, does anybody have another question? All right. If we're good, gentlemen, I want to thank you all very much for your time. Please tell everybody how to contact you on social media so they can get some of this great material. So we, are, we can be found on Facebook as Mortalis Music after Facebook.com. Uh, M-O-R-T-A-L-E-S. Yes, sir. Music. All right. Uh, and also, we have a website, mortalismusic.com, and that will just take you to our Bandcamp page, and that was, that's where you can hear all of our stuff. Hear your stuff and buy your merch and get down with some Mortalis. Yep, exactly. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day. Let's have a few beers, all right? Indeed. Thank you. Take care. I want to give a quick thanks to the guys in Mortalis for giving me their time and Damon and Texas Mist for having me at Stoner Days Fest. That was fantastic. Can't wait to do it next year. Until that time, let's hear a track from Mortalis. Now, I know um, my mom used to tell me that nothing good happens after 2 a.m., but this seems to be uh, an, a, like a paradigm shift or something because the name of this track is called Psychic Violence. Nothing good happens after midnight.
Next up is the band Owl Crusher. They are a three-piece doom sludge band based out of Northern Ireland, and they have their latest release out. It's self-titled Owl Crusher, O-W-L-C-R-U-S-H-E-R, all one word. It is fantastic. If you're into that doomy, sludgy, grimy metal, this is it. Listen to it right now. We're going to do the title track. This is Owl Crusher by, yeah, that's right, Owl Crusher.
as always, I want to thank everybody for sticking around towards the end. If you need to reach us, you can do so on social media at Doom Tomb Podcast. You can also reach us by email at doomtombpodcast at gmail.com. And if you get a chance, if you could swing over to iTunes, give us a rating, give us a review, that would be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. Five stars would be amazing. I'd really like that. Um, I know that it does something. It moves, some, it moves the needle a little bit somewhere, somehow, uh, in the iTunes world. I'm not really sure how, but anyway. So next week, we have the band members from Doomstress, and they were right between doing shows. They stopped off. They did this show. They had another show to do. So they were gracious enough to give us a little bit of time, and we sincerely appreciate that. So they will be on the next podcast, and we look forward to that. Until that time, hey, keep going to the shows. Buy a little merch every once in a while. Crank it up and stay heavy. Well, there's a quote that uh, Dio told to Dave Mustaine one time, and it was, well, you know, we can jerk each other off all day, or we can smoke this joint.